energies can be a very confusing thing. Especially when we're talking about energies that uh, don't necessarily have a clear understanding of where they've come from or why they're there or how they continue to be there. But we know one thing, energy cannot be destroyed. Today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online, we examine some of those energies. Some of those energies that uh, seem to be stuck in a house. Waiting. Showing themselves from time to time. Sometimes somewhat conscious, sometimes not. But they're there through the good times and the bad. And we also hear about a family that seems to successfully call on good energy, specifically naming it family members that have passed on, to help them with some not-so-good energy that they're dealing with within the confines of their home. Almost a ghost helping living to get rid of ghosts type situation. Very interesting stories today on EPP bonus episode number 393 of Real Ghost Stories Online. My name's Tony Bruski. Stay with us. Through the good times and the bad times, we've all lived a little bit of life or a lot of life, depending on your age by now, if you're listening to the show, likely. And there's, yeah, there's good times, there's bad times. Homes, houses, structures that we we live in, those are the places that often see us through many of those years. Sometimes the one consistent thing is that structure. Sometimes that is part of the chaos itself. But sometimes those are the places we have memories of happiness and warmth and at the same note, despair, sadness, sometimes in the same room, same places, same settings. When these things go on, does it leave an imprint on the house? The next people who come in and call that place home, is there somewhat of a reflection of what you lived or your experiences still lingering, still repeating themselves, still being able to be emotionally felt, those new residents? That's the question we ask in our next story. Take a listen. While this story takes place many, many years ago, I still remember it like it was yesterday. Hope everyone enjoys it. I call it the house on a dead end. In 1994, I was always at the university in lovely San Diego, California, when I received terrible news that my mother was tragically killed by a known companion. A few years later, I made the difficult decision to move back to my hometown in Colorado to pursue legal challenges regarding the tragedy. I wanted to make sure this individual will be held accountable for his participation. Since my late grandmother's home was empty, I moved into it with my son. It was a cute, small, 1900s home, two bedrooms, kitchen, living room, one bathroom located on a small dead-end street. Only a few homes were on this street. I don't believe my grandmother raised 13 children in such a tiny house. I have very fond memories of spending time with my grandmother at this home. She was a lovely lady. There was always talk amongst family members that the house was haunted. Oftentimes, I'd stay the night with my grandmother as a young child, and I never experienced anything paranormal in my years being in the home. Little been known, The rumors became more than just talk, and I would soon have my own stories to tell. A few weeks after moving in, the phone rang. There was static noise on the end of the line. I heard my mother say, Karen, I'm here. On the other side, I want you to know I'm okay. I said, is this a bad joke? I was quite upset and slammed down the phone. It sounded just like my mother. It left me feeling quite shaken up over the thought someone could be so cruel to play these jokes. 
Other times they noticed things missing and found in the oddest places in the house. I placed my favorite watch on the bathroom cabinet and couldn't find it anywhere. A few days later, it was under my bed. I thought it was strange. Then other things such as car keys, jewelry, even a checkbook were found behind cabinets, under the couch, or in a drawer. My first thought was, well, that's weird. Thinking I must be losing my mind, I asked my son if he was moving things around or hiding them from me, which he denied. This was not something he had ever done before, but asking him helped me realize something else was going on. I would see shadows of a man walking through the hallway into the bathroom. I'd hear people call my name when no one was around or hear voices whispering in my bedroom. Yet this was only the beginning of the horrifying paranormal things that would take place in that house. One night before bed, I could hear what sounded like footsteps and big thumps in the living room. My grandmother and other family members who lived in the home as children said the thump sounds were from a young sibling who died in the living room of the home from a concussion. The young lad had gotten into a fight and had hit his head, then went to the county fair, rode on rides. When he came home, he fell to his death on the living room floor. The thumps were just a normal part of the paranormal in the home that the family accepted because of his death thinking I would see an apparition or perhaps my son woke up and was running around the house, I decided to inspect these rumbles in the living room. As soon as I entered the living room, the sound stopped and there was no one there. A few nights later, I had awake to what sounded like cabinet doors opening and slamming shut. I walked into the kitchen expecting to see the doors open, but nothing was there. All the cabinet doors were closed and it got quiet. Later in the night, I awoke to the smell of bacon and eggs, which reminded me of my grandmother cooking breakfast. Once again, I went into the kitchen, but there was nothing there. Just a quiet and empty kitchen. The disruption of sleep was constant during my time in that house. I woke up a few nights later with my bed shaking uncontrollably. The sheets were moving up and down like you were making a bed. The bed frame itself was shaking up and down for what seemed like an eternity, but was more like a minute. I tried hard to play down the event by thinking it was just a big gust of air that came into the room. Left frightened and in disbelief, I lay there awake for most of the night praying. My father would come home around the house around 3.35 a.m. as he worked at a military base and had to leave for work by 5.30 a.m. Came to check on me before heading out to work. There were many nights I couldn't wait for him to get there. On one early morning in the summer, my father and I were sitting on the back porch. We both saw what looked like white smoke coming up from the ground in front of the shed. We sat there for a minute, watched how the smoke formed, an unidentifiable shape that was tall and almost figure-like. Again, trying to make sense of it, I thought I could be car headlights maybe, out in the frost, but neither were to blame for this. We stayed very still and quiet as we watched this wispy-like smoke until it disappeared. Neither of us could explain it. That's what my dad told me he sees it often and can't figure it out. And to make some sense of this activity, my mother was cremated and we placed her ashes in front of the shed with a small garden to memorialize her. Along with her ashes were that of my dad's oldest brother's ashes who'd passed away a few years earlier than my mom. Perhaps it was her trying to make contact with us. One night, my sister spent the night over and slept on the couch in the living room. She said she woke up to the sound of big thumps and saw a child running around the room. She described him as having blonde hair at about the age of eight years old. She said before she could say anything, he disappeared. Could this be the young boy that died 50 years earlier in the home? We may never know, as there are no pictures of him. Late night, one evening, my son and I were watching TV before bed. The house was quiet, felt cozy, snow was coming down. We said our good nights and went to bed. A few hours later, I awoke to the sounds of loud thumping, in which sounded like someone was running around on top of the roof. Went into the living room and I could hear the sound all around me, thump, 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 and loud sounds of people running on top of the roof. It was terrifying, to say the least. I went outside and looked for any sign of someone on top of the house, but it was quiet and no one was there. This noise continued for several hours. Being scared, I woke my son up 
We went to a hotel for the night. I just couldn't take it anymore. The sleepless nights and strange noises were bringing me to the point of insanity. A few days later, my neighbor came over to tell me that he sees people running around my backyard at night. He said they make lots of noises and thinks pesky kids are back there in the late at night causing trouble. I asked him if he knew who they were and he replied, no, I just see shadows, white colors and hear noises in your backyard, but I can't make out who they are. The neighbor's house only had a small chain link fence barrier between us. Kept an eye on my home knowing I lived alone as a single parent. At last, I was finally beginning to realize that I was not the only one experiencing this phenomena. There were others who had seen or heard something too. And my neighbors would soon experience a horrific night with me. On a warm summer's night, my son asked to spend a night at a friend's house. I welcomed the lone time and let him stay with his friend. It was about 9 p.m. when I heard a loud knocking at my door. I wouldn't dare open it for fear ran through my body. Again, several large pounding knocks. I went to the bedroom only to hear pounding on the house and windows, which shook all over. My two dogs were barking in the living room at someone or something. I was so fearful that I called the next door neighbor explaining, there's someone trying to get in my home. The old man and his family came out of their house. They saw no one but could hear loud banging noises coming from my home. They thought it was me pounding on the house. I was on the phone with them. I ran to their house. I was frightened and in my pajamas. They urged me to call the police as there may be an intruder on the loose. I called the police and made a report, but we couldn't give any description of any suspects. Unfortunately, a beloved guinea pig of mine passed away. Loved him so much and was saddened at his passing. This sweet piggy was with me while I lived in San Diego and comforted me for years. I laid him to rest with my mother and uncle in the backyard. That was until I was awakened by the sound of someone calling my name. I woke up, and at the end of the bed, there was his paw. I was freaking out, crying, and woke my son up to see if he was playing a joke. I went outside, and there was no disturbance of the grave area. To this day, I'm still bothered by that one. I placed his little paw in the ground and said a prayer. This activity continued for over four years. Oddly, I had finally learned to just ignore the noises, put a pillow over my head, and pretend nothing was going on. That's where we're going to stop the preview portion of this week's EPP bonus episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you'd like to hear the rest of it and all 393 bonus episodes, then become an extra podcast person. Like I said, we call them EPPs. We give you those four free episodes in their entirety every single week. We'd like to keep the show on the air, and that's how we give you the extra episode and uh, ask for your support. $5 a month gets you access to all of those bonus episodes, new ones every week, uh, as well as the advanced episodes of the show and the full archive, which is the world's largest audio archive of ghost stories. It's only $5 a month. You get access to all of it, all commercial free. You can binge away at your leisure. Ghostpodcast.com is where you can sign up, or if you prefer the Patreon app, go there or patreon.com slash real ghost stories and get signed up. Get all the bonus content and help keep our show on the air. Patreon.com slash Real Ghost Stories or ghostpodcast.com.